The Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Ah, the good old days, back when people were old-fashioned and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakeries, things haven't changed much over the years. Like Marita old-fashioned enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Merida. Merida enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you the commanding officer at Fort Newton in New Mexico Territory pounded his desk with his fist in frustration as he spoke heatedly to his aide, Lieutenant Perry. Hey, Thunder Lieutenant Perry, this situation is intolerable. I've had wide experience in Indian warfare, but this is the first time I've ever found Apaches following a deliberate strategic pattern in their operations. What do you make of it, Major Sam? Well, frankly, I'm puzzled. Their moves are made as if directed by a military mastermind. What's more puzzling is that they seem to know every move we make. Several army wagon trains came through without being molested, but the one carrying ammunition was the one that was in front of Apache's raided. Yes, and the couriers we sent asking for reinforcements have been intercepted. It seems impossible to get word through to the fort at El Paso. Exactly. The Apaches must have spies everywhere. Uh, let me try to get through to El Paso. You? Yes, sir. How can you expect to get through after so many others have failed? I, I know this territory well, sir, and I know the ways of Indians... I, I feel sure I can succeed. Well, all right, Lieutenant. You have my permission and my blessing. I sincerely hope you succeed. That afternoon, Lieutenant Perry left the fort with praise for his courage ringing in his ears. When he reached the top of a hill, he pulled to a stop. Oh, oh, yeah. For a moment, he looked back at the fort with a strange expression on his face. Then, with a grim smile, he removed his military hat and put it into his saddlebag, from which he took a wide, beaded headband. He adjusted the headband securely in place of his hat, then started down the trail at a gallop. Get up. Get up there. The Lone Ranger and Toto were riding up the trail toward Fort Newton. When Toto suddenly spoke. Look, Kimasabi, we see dust cloud over rise and distance. Yeah, someone's coming toward us. Returning to the gully until he passes. Come on, Toto. Come, Scout. Come on. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Who's him? Who's Scout? Oh, fella. The horseman will pass in a moment. Ah. He will not see us here. He'll come over rise now. 
Me see him through brush. Yes, I see him too. Get up, boy. Get up. Him wear army uniform. But look, he's wearing a beaded headband in place of his army hat. Ah, that's strange. Very strange. He wore the uniform of a cavalry officer and a headband of beads. I'm curious about him, Toto. Let's trail him and see where he goes. Meantime, the lieutenant followed the river trail for about two miles. Oh, 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 boy. Suddenly, he pulled to a stop as two Apache braves rode from behind big boulders and barred his path. Oh, there. They held rifles pointed at the officer. Oh, pale-faced soldier wear Indian band round head. You come. We take you to White Chief. The lieutenant hesitated a moment. The Indians still kept their rifles aimed at him, and he realized he had no other choice but to go with them. Finally, he spoke. Very well. I'll go with you. Take me to your white chief. Huh? Go that way. Get up. Get up. Get up. The two Indians and the lieutenant rode into the foothills for some time. Finally, they entered a deep-set narrow valley, and the officer realized he had reached the Apache's camp. He and his two escorts stopped in front of the chief's wigwam. The lieutenant waited beside his horse as the chief came from the wigwam, accompanied by a man in the uniform of a French army officer. Good afternoon, Captain Cabot. You are a most welcome visitor, Lieutenant. Chief Big Hawk, this is the American officer with whom I made friends in El Paso. Oh, friend of white leader is welcome to Apache camp. Oh, Chief Big Hawk. Captain, the headband you gave me was a pass of safety. <laughs> oui, Monsieur Lieutenant. Big Hawk has given orders to all Apache brave to respect the beaded headband. Uh. I am glad our many talks down in El Paso have convinced you to aid in the great cause, mon ami. In spite of all our talks, Captain, I don't know exactly what your cause is. I shall tell you briefly. As you know, Napoleon III has placed Maximilian on the throne of Mexico. And has given him military support. Yes, I know. It is Napoleon's desire to strengthen Maximilian's position among the people of Mexico so they will accept him more readily. I've heard Maximilian has great opposition. We, oui, unfortunately. But your activity among the Apaches, what about that? <laughs> Mon ami, the people of your country will think there is just another big uprising of the Indians. What they do not know is that when the settlers here have been terrorized and the few garrisons depleted and weakened in New Mexico, soldiers loyal to Maximilian and trained by Napoleon's officers will move in from the mountain region south of here and take the territory for Mexico. And you believe such a move will cause the Mexican people to look with favor on the new emperor? Of course. You already know conditions at Fort Newton? We oui. There are about 50 troopers at the fort. With your help, we shall learn the fort's weaknesses. And at dawn tomorrow, the Apaches will move against it. Now let us go into the wigwam and discuss the plan of attack with Chief Big Hawk. The Lone Ranger and Toto follow the trail of Lieutenant Perry and the two Apaches through the foothills. Toto noticed many Indian signs along the way. But he and the masked man managed to reach a ridge overlooking the camp in the valley without mishap. They pulled to a halt. Who's who? Who's who? Who's who? Who's who? Who's who? Who's Yes, I'll use my field glasses. What do you see? The officer we saw wearing the headband is talking to a man in what seems to be a French officer's uniform. That's strange. Now they're going into the chief's wigwam. The officer we saw must have come from Fort Newton. Him traitor, maybe. Yes. There's several hundred braves in that camp, Toto. The troopers must be told about them. If Apache watched trail to fort, it's not easy to get through. Mm, they'll most likely be watching the trail south of the foot of El Paso, too. Uh, me not savvy how fell up from fort. Ride trail without harm from Apache. Either he's known to them or has something to indicate that he's friendly to them. Maybe he... Toto, a beaded headband... That must be it. Ah. Don't you have a beaded headband in your saddlebag? Ah. Here. Your headband. Good. If we're right, the 
this should guarantee my safety on the trail to Fort Newton. Otto, you head for El Paso and tell Colonel Harris what we've seen. Uh -huh. I'll wait at Fort Newton for you. Adios. Adios. Me hurry. A three, four-hour ride. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up? You always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a devil delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut-sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream-filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there like you used to remember. The Devil Delights, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. Now to continue. After discovering the Apache camp, the Lone Ranger and Toto separated. The Indians started for El Paso, while the masked man rode toward Fort Newton wearing the beaded headband. He sighted Apaches on the way, but they let him pass without interference, which he concluded was due to the headband. It was dusk when the sergeant of the guard took the Lone Ranger into the Major's office. Where are you? I'm delighted and relieved to see you, my friend. Hello, Major. The mass, sir. I don't... This mass man is a good friend, Sergeant. You and the guards may leave. Yes, sir. My couriers haven't been able to get through. I, I don't know how you made it. Sit down, my friend. Oh, thanks. I know this headband brought me through safely. Hmm? I put it into my pocket just before I reached the fort, but I wore it while riding the trail. I uh, saw several Apaches on the way, but they didn't try to stop me. A beaded headband, eh? I don't see how you... I'll discuss it further in a moment, Major. Now tell me, did one of your men leave the fort a while ago? Uh, yes, my aide, Lieutenant Perry. Oh. I admired his courage. He offered to take a dispatch to Colonel Harris of El Paso. The lieutenant didn't go to El Paso. How do you know? Was he ambushed? Is he... Ah, he's alive, Major. He wore a beaded headband like this one. Todd and I saw him on the trail. I don't understand. The lieutenant met two Apache braves. They took him to the Apache camp. To, to the Apache camp? Then he's a prisoner. No, sir. Perhaps a traitor, Major. The masked man told briefly what he and Toto had seen through the field glasses. He concluded by saying... The fact that the lieutenant went to the Apache camp today may indicate the time is near for an attack on the fort. I'll give orders to be prepared for an attack. Will you stay with us? I'll be glad to. If Tonto gets through, the reinforcements may arrive before the attack. And if he doesn't get through, we're done for him. Perhaps, but not without putting up a mighty good fight. That evening in the chief's wigwam, the French officer, Captain Cabot, was talking to the lieutenant and Chief Big Hawk. It is settled that we attack the fort at dawn. I have an idea, Captain, that'll make the capture of the fort easy. So? And just what is the idea, mon ami? You plan to have the Apaches hidden just over the ridge in front of the fort at dawn. We? Oui. Well, why not let me ride at a gallop down the slope toward the gates of the fort? Followed by two or three braves shooting arrows over my head. Huh? The guards will think I've returned from El Paso and that I'm being attacked by a few Indians. They let me inside. Oh, and them, monsieur? Then I'll tell the major the Apaches are gathering to attack from behind the fort. Oh. When I get the chance, I'll unbolt the gates. The Apaches will attack down the slope from the front and be able to enter immediately. Wonderful. That is what we will do, Lieutenant. <laughs> During the night, there was great activity inside the fort, as settlers straggled in after being warned that an attack was possible, and everyone prepared for the expected fight. At dawn, the Lone Ranger and the Major stood on the rampart near the big gates, watching up the slope to the ridge beyond. Well, so far, there's nothing to indicate an attack is imminent. 
But if anything is going to happen, it should start soon. The sun's coming up. I'm worried about your friend Tonto. It seems to me if he got through, the reinforcements would have been here by this time. Yes, I know. I've tried not to think that he might have been... Look, huh? a rider galloping down the slope toward the fort. You Indians are chasing him. <laughs> That's a lieutenant. Let's get to the gates. Right. As the lieutenant approached, the gates were swung open. Three Apaches, keeping out of gun range, turned and raced back up the slope. In a moment, Lieutenant Perry pulled to a stop inside the fort. Oh, 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 oh. Steady there, steady. Yes, Lieutenant sir. Perry, I didn't expect you to return. Major, I... If uh, those Apaches had really been after you, Lieutenant... They were close enough to have shot you with an arrow. This mask, man. Hey, friend. Lieutenant, if this is a trick... Uh, no, not a trick against the fort, sir. But a trick to get here safely. There are 300 Apaches waiting behind that ridge in front of the fort. I told their leader, a, a French officer working on orders from Napoleon, that I'd say they'd attack from behind the fort. Lieutenant, you were seen in conference with the Apache chief at the Indian camp. Now, I'm inclined to think... Please, that... Major, you must believe me. I left here with full intentions of going to El Paso, and I was sure I'd get through safely for, uh, for reasons I'll explain later. Some Apaches stopped me on the trail and forced me to go with them to their camp. This is the only chance I've had to get back to the fort. That's the truth, sir. I believe him, Major. Huh? We saw the Apaches holding guns on him. I suggest you alert the troopers. The attack will come in a moment. Roger. Alert them in for the attack. Yes, sir. Uh, Sugar, stand the Frenchman, Captain Gabon, must be captured, sir. He's very dangerous. And he alone controls the Apaches at this time. Uh, I hope we can trust you, Lieutenant. He can be watched closely until we're sure, Major. Meantime, I think he is telling the truth. We'll see if... You think you're coming over the ridge? Have the men hold their fire until the Apaches are close enough for effective shots. Hold your fire and light the order. The Indians swarmed down the slope, heading directly for the gates. When the front ranks were within gun range, the Lone Ranger spoke. Now, Major. Open fire! <laughs> They didn't expect that volley. They expected me to open the gates for them. Look, there's a French officer with a chief. We must get him. You hit him. He fell from his horse. Have your men cover me, Major. Tell them to let me out. Open the gates and let the last man through. He'll never make it. As the Major and Lieutenant watched, the Lone Ranger ran out to where the French captain lay wounded. The men in the fort kept up rapid gunfire as he picked up the wounded man and started back. The Apaches hadn't rallied enough to be within range of him. But it seemed that in another moment he'd fall a victim to their bullets. Run! Run! He must make it! He must! He can't get back, Major! We better close the gate! Don't touch those gates! The two officers and the men watched tensely as the Lone Ranger ran with his heavy burden toward the open gates. Another moment and he'd be inside. Then he stumbled and fell. Uh, he's done for. We better close the gates before the Apaches come through. Major, look! Cavalry moving into both sides! As the Lone Ranger fell, he realized death was close. Grabbing one of his guns, he raised on his elbows and emptied it at the chief who had moved within range. At that moment, the masked man, too, realized the troopers had arrived. The cavalry from El Paso means Toto safe. The cavalry moved in fast, and the Apaches, now without any leader, seemed to think only of escaping. The major, lieutenant, and some of the troopers ran out through the gates as the Lone Ranger stood up. Yes, Major. You kept the Apaches from rescuing the French captain. And I see he's unconscious. We'll take him inside. Hey, in the fort, then. Hold on, hold on, Toto, thank heaven you're safe. I'm glad to get here in time, Tim Slavy. Thanks, Toto. We needed this help. We'll go inside and question that French officer when he regains consciousness. Let's go. All right. Later, the Major with the Lone Ranger, Toto, and the Lieutenant stood beside Captain Cabo's cot. Well, Captain, your big plans have fallen through. Lieutenant Perry has told us about them. The lieutenant, he is the traitor who turned against us. The lieutenant is a man of courage who did his country a big service, Captain Cabo. You, that mask, I, I do not understand. Another great man of courage, Captain. In spite of the lieutenant's efforts, your savages might have succeeded if it hadn't been for the mass man and his friend. I am a French officer of Napoleon's army. If I knew anything about Napoleon III, he'll deny he knew of your plans, Captain, and leave you in the hands of our government for punishment. Lieutenant, I owe you an apology for thinking you were a traitor. <laughs> I don't blame you for thinking that, sir. I met Captain Cabot in El Paso a month ago. 
I'd celebrated a little too much, and as most soldiers do, was complaining about certain things in the service. He approached me with the idea of throwing in with him, and I let him think I was willing. Why, you Americans, I do not understand you. You complain loudly about everything, but it means nothing. <laughs> we reserve the right to complain openly about matters, Captain. That's one of the rights freedom gives us, a right people in many other countries don't have. But actions speak louder than words, and the complaining soldiers will fight to preserve that right, along with others. Very true, sir. When I hear my men complaining, I am satisfied. If they're sulking, I know something is radically wrong. Lieutenant, I, I congratulate you, and I, too, apologize. Well, thank you, Major. Well, Toto, we'll head south this morning. Our work here is done. Ah, oh, Kimber Sunday. But we'll be back someday, Major. Adios, everyone. Adios. Adios. Major, who is that masked man? A great American lieutenant. A man who's always willing to risk his life to help his country and to preserve the freedom of its people. He's the Lone Ranger. I don't do Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch, maybe with hot dogs and baked beans, or a casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meals, don't forget to invite Marita, as in Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Remember, Marita? We're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day on your grocer's shelf. But remember, we bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. Listen to the Lone Ranger. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had watched Yank's place from a well-concealed camp on a hill within spyglass distance. That night, Yank and Joe were alone in the ranch house. Joe was asking... Boss, why'd you let the other boys go to town again? I didn't want them around when the outlaws walk into our trap. They'd want a split of the gold. You figure they'll come tonight? Yeah, the marshal and the deputy are gone for good, I hope. The Lone Ranger will lead him a merry chase. So the coast is clear for the gold thieves to come back after the Morgans. What'll I do? Guard the corral. I'll be hiding in here with my gun ready. Listen. I heard a noise outside. You better blow out the light. But I didn't hear anything. Did you leave that west window open? I never opened it. Well, it's open now. Please, you close that. Don't, don't shoot. Take them cover, Chid. I'm climbing in. How'd you like to swap two Morgans for your life, Oscar? Don't kill me. Take the horses. I'm taking your guns first. Oh, wait. Here. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy.